Hey guys, my name is Shreyas and welcome to Simple Biology. Today we're going to be talking about isomers. Now what is an isomer? An isomer is when two or more molecules have the same chemical formula but have a different arrangement of atoms within the molecule. And isomers are important in biology because they tend to display different chemical and physical properties from each other. Now this definition probably doesn't make any sense so let's go ahead and look at the first type of isomer so you understand what an isomer is. So the first type of isomer is a structural isomer. And structural isomers differ in the way that the atoms are linked. So if you look here, both of these molecules have the same chemical formula, they have the same chemical formula, but they have different arrangements. The way that the atoms are arranged within the compound are different for both of these. If you look here, this, this molecule right here has four carbons, one, two, three, four, and 10 hydrogen atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So C4H10. And then here again we have one, two, three, four carbon atoms, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogen atoms. So both of them have the same chemical formula, but they differ, they're different, they have a different arrangement of atoms. <clears throat> and stru they're structural isomers because they differ in the way that the atoms are linked. If you look here, we have an unbranched chain of carbon atoms, and here we have a branched chain of carbon atoms. So whenever you're, we talked about in the previous video about how hydrocarbons can differ in length or they can be unbranched and branched and all those and they can also be formed out, um, rings and things like that. So structural, structural isomers are just different in, in, the, in the sense that they're, the atoms are bonded to each other differently. As seen, just like seen like this. This is an example of a structural isomer. Okay. Now, geometric isomers come about when carbon double bonds, and this can either form a cis isomer or a trans isomer. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can understand um, what this means. Alright, so I've zoomed in here so you can better understand this. So, if you look here, in this um, compound here, and then this, these two um, uh, molecules are actually the same thing and that's because these two carbon atoms right here are single bonded to each other whenever carbon atoms are single bonded to each other it allows for free moment so we if you look here the colors are the same so this these are carbon atoms the blue dots are the hydrogen atoms and then the um this green dot is a chlorine atom and this um purple dot is a fluorine atom. So whenever you have single bond, single bonds, it allows for free rotation. So what that means is like, is that on, think of this as like a 3D structure, okay? So what this means is that at least on this plane right here, we can have free rotation like this. So we can, this, this, um, this, these three, uh, atoms right here can are free to rotate and the same and the same thing happens here uh, for these carbon for these three atoms right here they too can also rotate so because they can, because the carbon um, atoms are single bonded to each other so because of that these there's rotation there's free rotation here and then there's free rotation here as well so because of that just think that if you took these three atoms right here and you rotated it counterclockwise then we would get this thing right here. And if you took these three atoms right here and you rotate it counterclockwise, you get the same thing right here. So because of that, this molecule right here is the same thing as this molecule right here. Because again, carbon single bonds, and whenever carbon single bonds, you see this rotation. And I, let me explain that to you again if you didn't get that. This, these three atoms right here, one, two, three, can rotate to form this structure right here. And these three atoms right here, one, two, three, can rotate to form this structure right here. So that means this molecule is the same thing as this molecule. Now, whenever carbon double bonds, you can't have rotation anymore. So this, this rotation right here, that can't happen because the carbon atoms are double bonded. You can think of it as because there's a, um, because there's a double bond, the carbon atoms are kind of like, uh, they're, they're bonded together tightly, and that rotation that, I, that we saw here does not exist here. So because there's no rotation, this, this purple fluorine atom right here cannot flip to form this. So here we saw rotation, so this 
molecule is the same thing as this molecule. But since there's a double bond here, this molecule right here is not the same thing as this molecule because this fluorine atom can't just flip and come to the bottom and then have the hydrogen atom come to the top. So this molecule right here is not the same thing as this molecule right here. These are isomers. And it happens whenever carbon double bonds. Whenever you see a double bond between carbon, you're typically going to see these isomers. Okay. All right, so I just want to emphasize this only happens when carbon double bonds. So whenever we have a double bond, whenever we have a double bond and the hydrogen atoms are on the same side and the other two groups of atoms are on the same side as well, that's called the cis isomer, the cis isomer. And then whenever you have the hydrogen atoms on opposite sides and the other two groups of atoms on opposite sides, that's called the trans isomer. So if you look here and our two molecules drawn here, they have the same there are isomers because they have the same chemical formula but have a different arrangement of the atoms. So they have the same chemical formula but have different arrangement of atoms. And um, this would be the cis isomer because the hydrogen atoms are on the same side and the other two groups of atoms are on the same side. And then this would be the trans isomer because the hydrogen atoms are on opposite sides and the chlorine and fluorine atoms are also on opposite sides. Now let's look at the final type of isomer, which is called the um, enantiomers, and these are isomers which are mirror images of each other. And it occurs when carbon bonds to four different groups of atoms, four different atoms or four different groups of atoms. That's a mistake here. Okay, so whenever you have a carbon, and right here we have a carbon atom right here, and we also have a carbon atom right here, that's the red dot. And then we have four different groups of atoms, which are represented with different colors. Here I have blue, orange, purple, and green. Um, this is when an antiomers start to form. So whenever, again, this, o this only happens when carbon bonds to four different atoms or four different groups of atoms. And that carbon is called an asymmetric carbon. And a carbon which is bonded to four different groups of atoms or four different atoms is an asymmetric carbon. So the atom in the middle is the, an asymmetric carbon. And um, if you see here, they look like mirror images of each other, just like how your hands, if you look at your hands, your hands look exactly the same, but they're mirror images of each other. In the same sense, these two molecules are exactly the same, but they're mirror images of each other. And the this, whenever the atoms are arranged like this, this is called the L isomer. And then whenever you have um, the atoms arranged like this, this is called the D isomer. And um, they play an important role in the pharmaceutical industry because whenever we look at uh, some some drugs, they they tend to form an antiomers, and usually only one of the isomers, either the L isomer or the D isomer, would be effective, and then the other respective isomer would not be effective at treatment. For example, if you look at ibuprofen. The L isomer for ibuprofen is an ibuprofen is a um, is an isomer which helps with pain. The L isomer is typically effective, but the the D isomer is not effective. Okay, so it plays a very important role in the pharmaceutical chemistry in antiomers. But that's basically it. The three types of isomers: structural isomers. Uh, Geometric isomers and enantiomers are as simple as that.